Pilate tried to set Jesus free. Hear this. But the people blocked it. I want you to lift up that hand. Those of you who are watching at home, those of you, if you're driving in your car, just lift up one hand. You're at work. I need you to hear this. Lift up that hand. I am praying in earnest for you that God will allow the people you're not supposed to be with to free you. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. I, I know some of y'all don't want that message a week after Valentine's Day, but there are people who are holding you hostage from your assignment because God can't trust you to cut it off. I'm asking God to make them cut you off. The amazing thing is that Pilate could have freed him, but he kept him. Here it is. He kept him. Why? Because they look good together on the ground. Kept him. Why? Because he helped pay some of the bills. Kept him. Because my family like him, but he ain't good for me. God, I need some real people in here. Kept him. Because I ain't got the strength to start over again. Kept him. I'm saved, but I hate sleeping by myself. I'm talking to grown-ups right here. I need God to separate what I'm not supposed to be connected to. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in, I'm in verse number 17 and I'm coming. Verse number 17 says, they made him carry his own cross. They made him carry his own cross. And theologians would argue with us this morning that this ignominious cross is 300 pounds. 300 pounds, here it is, made of pure wood and they made Jesus carry it. They would argue with us aloud today, fellowship, that Jesus was somewhere around six foot two and on a strict pescatarian diet, walking seven miles a day, Jesus was 185 pounds. Jesus, 185 pounds, I'm waiting for you all to get it, was made to carry something double his weight. Help me, you, you keep talking about you want a double portion. Can you handle the weight that comes with your assignment? Do you understand that if it's easy, it ain't for you? You are anointed for something that is difficult, for something that is challenging. Whenever you feel weight on you, take it as confirmation. I was built for this. There are people who are jealous of you. They couldn't walk a mile in your shoes. Forget a mile in your shoes. They couldn't walk flip-flops with the kind of weight that you carry. It is amazing that you ain't had a nervous breakdown. It is God's grace that you ain't putting in opiates in your body. You are astounded that you don't need alcohol just to make it through. But His grace hallelujah i don't want you to worship him if you ain't dealing with nothing heavy but if you're dealing with some heavy stuff i tell you to lift up that hand and open up your mouth nobody told me the road was gonna be easy but i don't believe he's brought me this far come on keep lifting that hand I, 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 I feel glory now. I said, lift up that hand. Hey, she can almost. I, 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 I. I need you to lift up your hand and open up your mouth. God says, I'm going to help you carry it away. Hallelujah. I feel it right through here. Pastor Sharp, my time is coming out, but I feel a breakthrough. I said, lift up that hand and open up your mouth. He said, not only are you going to carry the weight, here's your shout. You're going to carry the weight while going uphill. While you are struggling, you're going to get elevated. You didn't hear what I just said. While you are under duress, you're going to get promoted. While you feel everything that you're going through, you shall not die. But you shall live to see the glory of the Lord. Come on, lift up your head, oh ye gates. Lift up your head. The King of Glory is about to come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord fighting in battle. I need to lift up your voice. I know it's heaven. I know it's heaven. I know it's heaven. I 
God and I receive it. But the race isn't given to the swift. It's not given to the strong. But to those that endure to the end. Lift up your voice. We may endure for a night. But joy, joy is coming this morning. Come on, Zion. Take that weight upon the Lord. Shall we do that strength that shall mount up on wings of eagles? That shall run and not get weary. That shall walk and they shall not faint. Lift up your voice. It's been easy. It's been easy. Much. It's got to be better than February. Lift up your voice. 22. It's going to be better than 21. Lift up your voice. This won't break you. This won't destroy you. You got a God inside of you. You can handle this. Wave that hand. I said, Wave the hand. It's getting easier. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Find your holy God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I feel his power in this room. Thank you, Holy God. You may be seated. I am. I took a long way home, but I just got on the porch. Let me knock on the door. I got to give this to you, and then I'm going. I'm, I'm in verse 18. I got to show you this, Pastor Shop, and then I'm, I'm gone. Verse 18 is what's going to mess you up. Is um, they then crucified him. They crucified him. It was the most inhumane torture instrument in the history of humanity. God help me. Pastor Sharp, just promise me you won't tackle me. Uh, they, they crucified him. Hear this, fellowship. But they used the wrong instruments. Lady Sharp, they crucified him. But they used the wrong instruments. For Jesus, they should have put him in the electric chair. God help me in here. They should have killed him by lethal injection. I'm waiting for y'all to catch it. But they used the wrong instruments. Pastor, what do you mean they used the wrong instruments? They used nails and they used wood. I wish I was at fellowship in Chicago. They use the wrong stuff. They use nails and they use wood. Come on, are y'all with me? They, they pick the wrong stuff. They use nails and they use wood. They forgot for 30 years. That's the only thing Jesus ever worked with is nails and wood. You want to know why Jesus didn't cry? You want to know why he didn't whimper? You want to know why he didn't go in the shock? Because he had been hurt before. And because he already knew what a nail felt like. He was like Clint Eastwood. Go ahead and make my day. Is there anybody here that can tell the devil I already been hurt before? I already been I've already been left. I've already been abandoned. But I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. And the Son of God and the Father, I'm like John Bryant and bend down from heaven and look Jesus in here and say, don't you embarrass me on 
on the cross. It ain't gonna be that bad. It ain't gonna be that bad. How long I gotta suffer? Just three days. They run the line. They stretched him wide. He's on his head. And then he died. But there's no time. The story ends. Three days later. I can't hear the worship. Three days later. He got up. With power in his head. Get somebody from him. And they call me in three days. Check on me in three days. See about me in three days. I never would have made it, but I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm so much better. Let the repeat of the Lord open up your mouth and shout like he said. I want you to lift up that hand softly, son. In strength, lift up that hand. Pastor, what are you saying to me? I am not saying to you, you are not going to get hurt again. I'm telling you, it won't hurt as bad. God, somebody needed that word, huh? I'm not telling you, you ain't ever going to get lied on or betrayed. But the effect won't be the same because you've already lived through it. I want you to lift that hand. I want to pray over you. Your pastor brought me because he trusts the anointing that's on my life. I want you to lift that hand. I tell the members of New Birth, lift your hand. Watch this. As high as you see yourself going. I speak of every lifted hand. That the Holy Spirit is now giving you a boost to shout. That even if you get hit, you won't feel the effects of it. I pray that God make your bounce back higher than your fall down. I pray that God will plant a trampoline in the pit they tried to throw you in. I pray that God will allow this not to bring you agony but to elevate you to another place in glory and those of you who your faith comes into agreement with my faith and you believe that God is going to cover you from whatever pain might come would you give God a best shout of thanksgiving right now come on come on clap your hands and open up your mouth I said give God your best shout I'm going to say this to you. Pastor Sharp, thank you so very much for allowing me the privilege to speak God's name out loud. I want to say something to you, fellowship. My mentor, Bishop Noel Jones, said something to me that has haunted me my entire ministry. He said, God will allow preachers to go through stuff, hear this, just so that they have something to preach. God, did you hear what I just said? Some of the stuff that you went through is not for you. You're going through it because God needs a stage. My sister's a clinical psychologist out of Pepperdine University, Dr. Tamer Bryant Davis. And she said something to me, lady, um, shop that messed me up. She said, 92% of our stress is not ours. We stressed about somebody else. You fasting and they eating. Y'all ain't saying that. You up at night praying and they sleep watching Netflix. God today, hear this, is going to free you from false obligation. You are not their savior, deliverer, or redeemer. You are just their friend. He died for them so you don't have to. 